Hi, and welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas. This is the global user education conference for Amazon Web Services. Uh, we're joined live on the expo floor here at the Sands Expo by an expert guest, and we're going to bring you an announcement of a brand new AWS service today. And we're getting towards the end of the day here, which means the energy levels can start to drop a little <laughs> bit. But there are a couple of things that are preventing that in this case. First of all, I just discovered that Ryan and I are 10-year twins. We've both been at AWS for four years, 360 and something <laughs> days. So we're both going to hit our five-year anniversary at AWS together next week, which is kind of nice. Uh, secondly, we're going to talk here about a area of AWS which I consider to be one of the most interesting areas, which is real-time analytics for streaming data, which is a super exciting area. Uh, but first of all, before we do that, maybe both of our hosts are being the first time on camera today, so maybe you can both introduce yourselves and then we'll get going. Sure, please. Go ahead, Alex. Okay, hi, I'm Alex. I'm a technical evangelist at AWS. Hi, I'm Ryan Nienheis. I'm a senior technical product manager at AWS. Great, and what is the service called that you work on, Ryan? So I work on a set of services called Amazon Kinesis. Um, Amazon Kinesis makes it easy for customers to work with real-time streaming data. Okay, and uh, we're on Twitch, which means that a lot of our viewers are likely to be interested in gaming. Uh, maybe you could talk about a couple of illustrative use cases for the existing Kinesis services. I think you've got at least one gaming customer up your sleeve that you can probably talk about. Absolutely. So how uh, do customers use Kinesis? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm also a huge fan of gaming and Twitch. So. Um, uh, Amazon Kinesis is a set of streaming data services. One of our customers that uses is a company called Epic Games. They ship a very popular game called Fortnite. Uh, Epic Games uses Amazon Kinesis to capture game telemetry data and ingest it and get real-time analytics on what's going on with the game in order to improve the game experience. If you're uh, interested in learning more about how Epic Games use AWS, there's a talk that they gave at our AWS Summit from New York early this year that you can find on YouTube which kind of highlights one interesting part of running gaming workloads in the cloud, which is that the infrastructure that is concerned with telemetry and analytics is probably every bit as big as the infrastructure involved in allowing users to play the game in real time. There's a huge amount of technology involved in figuring out how people are using the services, right? Absolutely. So, uh, like in massively multiplayer online games like Fortnite, as well as with IoT sensors, uh, AWS, uh, sorry, Amazon EC2 instances, uh, all of these generate a massive amounts of data. So the core problem that Amazon Kinesis solves is ingesting, capturing that information, and then making it available to process in real time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great, awesome. and how do, uh, you talked there about ingest, so how do developers send data into Kinesis today? If I'm creating an app or writing a video game, maybe using an existing engine, how do I interact with Kinesis in order to get my data sets up into the cloud using this service. Absolutely, so the most popular way to ingest data into Amazon Kinesis is to use the AWS SDKs. Uh, there's also another, uh, a number of other open source libraries that we ship to ingest data into Amazon Kinesis, including the Amazon Kinesis Agent, which works great for log files, uh, the Amazon Kinesis Producer Library, which works for great for high throughput data. In addition to that, uh, there's a number of managed solutions for ingesting data into Amazon Kinesis data streams. They include AWS IoT, uh, there's a way to uh, send data sent to Amazon CloudWatch, to forward that to, to Amazon Kinesis, uh, and several others. Great, cool. And you have something new to announce, so what is it that you're announcing today here at AWS reInvent? What's the new hotness that you're here to tell us about? So I'm excited to announce, uh, we have a service called Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics, which currently allows SQL developers to build real-time streaming applications. So today we're announcing Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for Java, it allows customers to build real-time streaming applications and using their own custom Java code. Uh, what kind of capabilities will this unlock for Java developers then? What will I be able to do by using this service that I can't do today? So, uh, great question. So, Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for Java allows customers to build sophisticated Java applications. Everything from continuously generating business and operational metrics to doing streaming ETL into other analytics services like Redshift, Amazon S3. Uh, the key to offering Java code here is the flexibility. Um, we provide a number of things that also make it easy to build applications. What, what are those things that make it easier to build applications? So the way you use the service is you first start uh, by downloading a set of open source libraries. Uh, they include the AWS SDKs, uh, a popular open source library called Apache Flink, where you build your application locally. The focus is really on a core development experience. Once you build your application, you upload the code to the service, and we handle everything else from scaling the application up and down to durably backing up the application and much more. 
Great. You mentioned an uh, open source project there called Flink, Apache Flink. Uh, I'm kind of familiar with it, but I'm guessing that a lot of the viewers on the stream might not be so familiar. In fact, if there's anything here that you want to learn more about which is new to you, do submit your questions using Twitch chat and Alex will put them to us on the stage. But can you tell our viewers a little bit more about what Flink is? What kind of role does that play in the streaming data ecosystem? Why would a developer choose to use it? Absolutely. So Apache Flink is a distributed framework and engine for processing data streams. Uh, it comes with a very, very simple programming model that makes it uh, easy for you to build very powerful applications quickly. Uh, it includes a set of streaming operators that allow you to solve common streaming data problems relatively easily. So as an example, uh, one operator would be a window operator, which allow you to bound your processing on time, uh, uh, using time semantics. Another powerful operator is a key by operator, which allow you to logically change the organization of your stream in real time. You mentioned uh, time bound operations there. This is for things like running totals, yeah? So I could yeah. say, how many events of this type have I seen over the course of the last hour, week, or month? I imagine there's quite a lot of complexity in maintaining state for long running calculations of that type. So is that something that is made simpler by using Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics? Is that part of the service? Absolutely. So uh, when you're performing real time computations in, uh, excuse me, when you're performing uh, computations in real time, uh, one of the hard things about it is making sure that your application is automatically backed up so that if you have a disruption, you can quickly restore to be again processing in real time. So if you use any of the operators that we provide through Apache Flink, we'll automatically back up your application state. So we do this in case if you update your code, we can seamlessly uh, restore your application without any uh, duplicates or anything like that. Uh, additionally, we also provide another piece of functionality called application snapshots. These allow you to create a point in time recovery point. So for example, if you're doing your real time processing and later find out you made a code error, you can roll back and rewind your application using one of these snapshots with a simple API call. And then you're playing back records from the stream in exactly. sequence from that point forward exactly so right. you get the right result at the end of your calculation process. Yeah, exactly right. Awesome. Uh, something quick, else quick that strikes. Sorry guys, quick question from the audience. Uh, can you go a bit deeper into why uh, we are delivering this for Java applications specifically? We have user uh, Nimi asking about why not Python? What's special about Java? Can you share something about that? Um, so the reason why we chose Java first to release uh, is that Java is the most popular and most powerful language that customers use to process data streams in real time. Uh, we do very commonly get Python applications. It's something that I think that we'll be working on in the future. Uh, but for now, we've picked it because a lot of the customers that use streaming data are infrastructure engineers, data engineers, who work with Java primarily, but other, also other languages. Um, I think you'll be looking forward to some other announcement coming to us probably later, sometime in the future. Awesome. Thanks. OK, great. Uh, what about things like deploying my applications and also scaling my stream processing applications? Are they characteristics of of the service. You talked about checkpointing for deployment, but can you talk a little bit more about how deployment works? And can you also talk about how you handle things like scaling stream throughput? Absolutely. So uh, starting out with scaling, uh, by default, uh, your applications will automatically scale up. So we'll scale your applications up, and we do that providing more resources to your applications in the form of what's called a Kinesis processing unit, which is a unit of stream processing cap uh, capacity that is one VPCU and four gigabytes of memory. So we'll scale you from one KPU, uh, so, or one core, if you could think about it like that, to thousands of cores in your application. Alternatively, if our automatic scaling capabilities don't work out for you, or you'd like to explicitly provision your uh, uh, capacity for your application, you can also do that. So you can specify the exact number of resources that you'd like uh, to scale your application. Um, Another cool aspect of the service is managing an application and monitoring it. So the service is very well integrated with Amazon CloudWatch logs and Amazon CloudWatch metrics, uh, allow you to um, choose the granularity of monitoring that you want, from very high level metrics and logs to very granular detailed logging to debug what's going on with your application. Great, great. Uh, and uh, presumably that Kinesis throughput unit that you talked about there, is that also the way in which this service is built? Do you build for the number of those provisioned units? Correct. Uh, so the service is built, Java applications are built at the same rate that we build SQL applications. Uh, so you're built primarily based off of Kinesis processing units. At, in US East 1, it's 11 cents per KPU hour. Uh, Java applications come with some unique capabilities, though, that uh, don't come with SQL applications. <clears throat> 
namely storage. So with that KPU, we also charge based off of running application storage. Uh, we give you quite access to quite a lot of disk for processing. This is the nature of like stateful processing. So per KPU, you have access to up to 50 gigabytes of disk or running application storage. And then the final dimension is durable application backups, which is the mechanism we use to charge for that snapshot functionality I mentioned previously. Great, excellent. So the last question I've got is about extensibility and how developers get started with the service. So are there any options that developers have to extend the capabilities of this service? And how do developers go about getting started with this new feature? Absolutely. So uh, you can go right now to the AW Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics Console to create an application. Um, the way you get started is you download the open source libraries, and it comes with a number of connectors to Kinesis Data Streams, Kinesis Data Firos, Amazon DynaDB, uh, Amazon DynamoDB, our NoSQL database, and a couple other AWS services. But beyond that, if we don't support a service, uh, AWS service, or maybe some custom run piece of software that you want to integrate with, you can easily extend uh, the, both the where you read data from in the application as well as where you write to. Um, the, the framework that we provide makes it easy to build applications, but we don't box you in. You really have the flexibility to build what you want. And what about getting, so getting started is just as simple as downloading those exactly. SDKs, compiling your Java bytecode, and then shipping that up to an endpoint. Exactly, so getting started is uh, you download the set of SDKs, you work locally, uh, you build your application. Once your application is built, compile into a jar, upload it to the service, and we take it from there. Great, any other questions from the stream, Alex? Yes, so we have Beef Naked One, nice name, that asks is, if there is any limitation as far as volume or throughput, depending on a SQL or Java. So um, both services were, uh, both SQL applications and Java applications will scale the process hundreds of thousands or millions of events per second. Uh, Java applications have a little bit more flexibility with how you, in the nature of Java, with how you scale an application. Uh, so you can process you know, tens or even hundreds of millions of um, records per second. It's like in the streaming world, that's like we, throughput is how we talk about uh, scale. So uh, I will say that there is like a soft limit of eight KPUs, but a simple limit increase form will increase that to thousands or whatever you need for your application. Uh, yeah, if you're new to AWS, many of our services do have these soft limits, and they're really just intended to prevent, well, to make the process of scaling up your service usage a more conscious decision, so that if you have an application which is unexpectedly using more AWS resources than you anticipate, uh, you're not going to end up with a big bill exactly. for that. You will be capped unless you make a limit request through our support console. Yep. And with a soft limit, those limit requests can be processed very quickly, and we can actually elevate them to some very large numbers in the majority of cases. Exactly. So if you do have a substantial streaming app that you want to deploy, obviously you can test it at a small scale and then make one of those limit increase requests when you need to go big. Exactly. Great, any, th any other questions? Awesome. Yeah, so would you recommend any specific best practice about extending or, uh, or uh, migrating an existing SQL up into the Java new version? Um, so the SQL-based, uh, so Kinesis Data Analytics currently supports SQL-based applications. Uh, it's a very native SQL experience. Uh, within the Java application uh, service, we also support some SQL primitives. So okay. you, there is some mapping to that. Um, I'd encourage a customer that had that question to actually look at their use case. So some use cases are naturally very good fits for SQL, things like group buys and stuff like that. Uh, but if you need to extend your processing, I'd uh, first look at the primitives you've built in your SQL application and see if you can map them to the Java-based primitives. Right. There's usually a one-to-one -one mapping there. Uh, the principles at a high level are the same. You're working with streams that continuously process, um, we're continuously processing data streams in your application. Right, thank you. Great, excellent. So we'll wrap up this segment here. I'm excited to see what you do with uh, Kinesis Data Analytics for Java application. I think it's a great launch, and thanks for joining us to talk about it, Ryan. Thank I really you. appreciate it. We'll see you soon. We'll be back in just a few minutes.